So good morning friends, family, YouTube subscribers. Welcome to a wonderful Sunday morning on this online streaming service that we have at Quenonia. So it's so wonderful to be with all of you this morning and we're going to start off with a fantastic series in this coming weeks starting off this morning um, about the unsung heroes of the Bible. So we're very, very excited about it, about it. I believe God wants to give us great life lessons from, from some great unsung heroes that you might or might not even know uh, in the Bible. So I want to start off with a prayer and then I want to delve into it because I'm excited about this word this morning and I think it will bless us um, starting off with a character God has shown me years ago and it was really significant for me in my growth as well and understanding authorities. But let's pray over it before we start this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for this morning. I want to thank you for your grace, your mercy, your goodness, and your kindness, Father, over, the, over us this morning. I pray, God, that this word, Father, would be touched by you. I pray for a blessing over everyone listening to the stream, whether it be the stream on YouTube or even the MP3, Father. I pray such an amazing blessing over them in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that they'll have encounters with you in this time and that they'll hear your heart and your spirit, Father, as we are preaching this message this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, and your kindness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. So, like I said, we start with a new series called Unsung Heroes. And the character that I want to start with this morning is a king. And this king's story is in 2 Kings 9 and 10. So I'm going to just little, tell you a little bit about this king. You may or may not know him, like I said. And his name is King Yehu. And King Yehu was a king um, from another part or a separate kingdom of Israel. And uh, I think he was a 10th king. Yes, he was a 10th king of the separate kingdom of, 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 of Israel. And he was actually a very significant player uh, in what God has called him to do. So he was called to action um, by the prophet Elijah that uh, sent one of his young prophets to him. And I'm going to uh, read out of the word a little bit about that so we can understand the backstory of his calling and anointing and that, how that relates to us even today, what we can learn from him. But in any case, getting back to a little bit of his backstory, he was a commander in um, Ahab's uh, kingdom. He's, he's, he's um, yeah, he, uh, but he was called, his main command and main calling was to destroy the heir or heirs of Ahab. And we know that it was in a time as well, if you don't know, it was in a time as well of Jezebel. So he was the one that actually brought Jezebel's rule down. He destroyed uh, Jezebel completely, but he went, went one step further. So what he did was actually, he, he um, destroyed the cult of Baal worship. He was very cunning in the way that he did that. And I'll tell the story a little bit 
later on as well and how that how that we can use that even today even in our understanding of authority uh, and worship which is which is really powerful authority worship I uh, almost want to say and then uh, commandment how to do the great commission that God has given us to be bold in it so wonderful so he was Yehu was I think for 28 years he was king but because of his obedience and what he did for the Lord, God blessed him. So, so, so God blessed Yehu uh, that in his family line, I think it was the most kings that came out of one king. And, uh, you know, generationally, I think it was up to four generations of kings after him that was out of his bloodline. And that is such a blessing that God gave him. But one thing as well to note uh, uh, about Yehu, Yehu uh, started very strong as a, as a king but he finished poorly as well because of a, a, a compromise in his life. But God even stayed faithful in that. So let's pick up the story in 2 Kings 9 verses 1 to 7. I want to read that out. And that was the calling and the anointing of Yeo. So this is where we get the story where Elijah comes and he gets the young prophet. And he says to him that he needs to go and he needs to anoint um, Yeo. But let me read the story from verses 1. It says, Meanwhile, Elisha... Uh, the prophet had summoned a member of the group of prophets. He said to them, get ready to travel, he told him, and take the flask of oil with you. Go to Ramoth Gilead and find Yehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimsi. Call him into a private room away from his friends and pour the oil over his head. Say to him, this is what the Lord says. I anoint you to be the king over Israel. Then open the door and run for your life. When he arrived there, he found Yehu sitting around with the other army officers. I have a message for you, Commander, he said. For which one of us? Yehu asked. Because remember, there was a, there were, his friends were all commanders. For you, Commander, he replied. So the young prophet did as he was told and went to Ramoth Gilead. So Yehu left the others and went into the house. Then the young prophet poured the oil over Yehu's head and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people, Israel. You are to destroy the family of Ahab, your master. In this way, I will avenge the murder of my prophets and all the Lord's servants who were killed by Jezebel. I love that, you know, and he gets this command over his life. But there's something really powerful and significant what happened when he came out of that room and went back to his friend. And this is something that God has shown me even especially in Yehu's life, that we get a calling sometimes from God and we hear a word over our lives and what we'll think sometimes, you know what, I shrug it off, I don't know if that word is really for me. And Yehu was such a person that heard this word from this young prophet and when he went out, he almost, you know, ignored it or shrugged it off. But listen to this further on how his friends recognized the mantle or the calling of God or the anointing of God over his life. And this is in 2 Kings 9 again, but from 11 to 13. So the story goes on. So Yeh went back to his fellow officers and one of them asked him, what did that mad man want? <laughs> is everything all right? I can just imagine this young prophet coming in, anoints Yeh, he runs away. He just runs away. He's like, what's going on with this young guy? And he just goes. And of course, they should have thought, no, this guy's crazy. But listen to the story further on. But this is Yehu's response, which is very interesting. He says to them, you know how a man like that babbles on. Yehu replied, you're hiding something. No? They said, tell us. So Yehu told them, he said, to, he, he said to me, that was his reply. This is what the Lord says. I have anointed you to be king over Israel. Then they quickly, listen to their response, I love this, the officer's response, his friend's response. Then they quickly spread out their cloaks on the bare steps and blew the ram's horn, shouting, Yehu is king. This is so powerful for me because Yehu did not recognize the call of God upon his life. He almost shrugged it off to a madman babbling on. And his friends hear the word, the fellow officers hear the word, and they understood authority and power. They understood that. So when they heard that what God has placed over Yehu, they responded in an instant, took off their cloaks, threw it down on the ground, put it down, and, and they just proclaimed, blowing the ram's horn, just proclaiming that Yehu 
is the king of Israel. They recognize the call and the mantle upon his life. What that actually did, because they recognized it, it in an instant took Jehu from being a commander to a king. Why? Not because of his own doing, not because of his friends, but because of his friends recognizing the, the mantle, the calling, the anointing of God in his life, and it called him straight away into action. Yehu was straight away into action, ready for the task at hand that God has given him, and there he goes. But Yehu went, and, and, and like we know and understand, I'm not going to read the story, he took out Jezebel. He actually cried out. She was busy putting on makeup and she was getting herself ready and that's the way that she was. She, she tried to convince him with beauty and she was standing on top, not on top, uh, in her window, a few stories up. And, and, and she looked down at, at Yehu and she said, what do you want? Uh, do you, you come to kill me? And, but, but here's the thing. Um, Yehu did, ignored her totally. He was so focused on the calling of God in his life. He asked her servants around her, who is with me? Throw her down. Throw her out of the window. And guess what they did? They threw her out. But that's the Chris translation. <laughs> you can go and read on the story itself. And they threw her down and the dogs ate her up. Wild dogs just ate her up. It is just, it's a horrific horrific way to go but he started with that or he, he went through that he did everything God wanted he, he, he went through but he went one step further Yehu which is amazing and this is going to help us understanding um, authority and, and that and, and the call of God upon our lives but Yehu destroyed the cult um, of Baal worship now in that time as well there was a big following of cult uh, of, of Baal worship, uh, a cult worship following that was going on. But what, <laughs> what Yehu did, and it's in uh, 2 Kings 10, 18 to 25, uh, or even 18 um, up to 28. You can go read the whole story. I'm not going to read it. Um, but I love the way it starts. Listen to this. I'm going to read the first two or three uh, uh, verses. He says, Then Yehu brought all the people together and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little. Listen how cunning Yehu is. And Yehu says, Yehu will serve him much. Now summon all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. See that no one is missing because I'm going to hold a great sacrifice for Baal. Anyone who fails to come will no longer live. So what he did was he sent out the message to all and said, get all of them together at the, at, um, the temple of Baal. And he, and he had this great set up there but what he actually was doing he was getting all of them together to take them all out at once you know at one time so on the outside of the temple he had like i think 80 soldiers put around and what he said to them as well if you let anyone pass your life will pay the price this is a, your life will be uh, the the price paid if you let any of the ball worshipers out uh, or, or get past you but he was very cunning in it because the word of God says that they were filled wall to wall. The whole temple was filled up with these Baal worshippers and priests and it was just filled up. And, and, and he said, no, we're going to bring some burnt offerings and I'm going to, I, I'm, I'm going to be the one that's going to, you know, uh, serve him a lot. He was just so cunning <laughs> in his way of destroying uh, the, uh, um, the, the whole cult of, of Baal worship. But getting back to that, that story, which is, is really powerful, he even asked him, he says, if, recognize if there's anyone that serves the Lord among you. Because he wanted to make sure there's only Baal worshippers in there. He says, make sure that there's no one among you that serves the Lord. So wall to wall, they were there. And what he did, he killed them all. He killed them all. He took them out in one shot. So <laughs> that was, that was Yehu. He actually went far above far above and the word of God says he says they demol they demolished sacred stone of Baal and tore down the temple of Baal and people have used it for a, a latrine to this day so Yehu destroyed Baal worship in Israel so he destroyed any false idol Baal worship in um, in Israel which is which is actually actually ironic uh, in a sense and a, and a bit hypocritical because Yehu himself did not finish strong yes he, he started off so strong as a powerful king and um, but, he, but but he did not finish off uh, uh, strong because uh, if we read in um, second kings 10 29 to 31 there's two things that we can see and learn from uh, uh, Yehu's life is the one is and this is powerful God was faithful 
in his obedience to what he did, what God asked him. And the second thing is Yehu, Yehu's compromise. So the first thing, let me just read this and then we'll just talk a little bit about that. And I want to get to the lessons of Yehu. So um, from verses 29, he did not, however, destroy the gold calves of Bethel and Dun, with which Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had caused Israel to sin. He didn't do that. That one part, that one compromise, that one false idol that was still up there, he did not, he, he, he did not let it go. But he listened to what the word of God says. Nonetheless, the Lord said to Yeho, you have done well in following my instructions to destroy the family of Ahab. Therefore, your descendants, descendants will be kings of Israel down to the fourth generation. I mean, that would have been enough to say, yeah, break down every stronghold, break down every idol. But no, not Yehu. He said, but Yehu did not obey the law of the Lord, the God of Israel, with all his heart. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. One little compromise caused him not to finish strong. But that's not going to be a focus of our story. But what a lesson we can learn from it. How faithful God is even in that in that place but God I believe wanted to bless him more God wanted to do more in his life had he just broken down that fine I think he would not be such an unsung hero today if he had taken out that one compromise even but anyways let's look at some lessons from 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 Yeh's calling and the first thing I want to want to talk about and, and bringing it back to us and bringing it home today is everyone is called by God today every believer that is in Jesus Christ has been called you know we don't need prophets to come and run to us and put oil on us no we don't need that today but when we accepted Jesus Christ we've received a calling over our life and there might be some unsung heroes this morning listening to this message sitting there saying God you, uh, you're not able to use me God I'm not good enough for for the for the ministry no but you are listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 28 18 to 20 he says Jesus came and told his disciples come on I have been given all authority so that's very important Jesus has all authority he says in two places heaven and on earth therefore go and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. Teach these new disciples, that's us included, to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of this age. So what is this major calling? I'm just going to talk about the one calling today, not the different callings that all of us have to actually... um, Get, uh, fulfill the full calling or command that the great commission that Jesus has given because that's the purpose of it though isn't it to, to bring the gospel of the kingdom of God you know that's the calling but some of us have got different roles and functions in how we go about that but I want to talk about the global universal calling or commandment that is go and make disciples of all the nations teaching them uh, you know uh, baptizing them so we've all got that we've all been anointed by God we've all been given the authority by God by Jesus Christ himself we've been empowered just like Yehu was empowered to reach those that need Jesus come on I'm getting excited about this word this morning I don't know about you because I believe God wants to empower us once again I think there's a few of us that are sitting right now watching this stream listening to this stream maybe that have felt in your life maybe you know what I received Jesus but I feel like I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm not up to the task of that you know and I think just like with you you walked out of that little room after you received Jesus and you almost heard that that there's a strong calling and authority has been given to you and it's almost like you just shrug it off yes I don't know it's not for me and and you need to this morning to recognize the mantle and the calling of God and the authority released to you you need to recognize that this morning amen come on so just to affirm that even more second corinthians 5 16 to 20 says this this means that anyone who belongs to christ has become a new person the old life is gone and new life has begun so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view at one time we thought of christ merely from a human point of view how differently we know him now And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. 
For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sin against him. And he gave us the wonderful message of reconciliation. Come on. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Come back to God. So if the authority has been given to God, to Jesus, heaven and earth, he says he's given that to us as ambassadors to bring the great message of reconciliation wherever we go. So if that is true, then we have the ability to tear down strongholds as well. Whatever those things might be. And I want to speak about four areas this morning. And I'm almost done with this message, but four areas I believe where this commandment calls me to, where this commandment or great commission Jesus has given me leads me to. And the first thing I want to say is to my families. That commandment leads me to my family. Second thing leads me to my work. Third thing I want to say is lead me to social spheres of influence. My friends, my social, smaller little circle of influence that I have. And then very importantly as well, my community. My community, the greater area, the greater ripple effect of my life. You know, and I really do believe that is what it gives. Uh, or that is where the commandment leads me to. So very powerful stuff. But how does that look, Chris? How does that look this morning? No, very easy. We look at the life of Yeo. He got the responsibility and calling to action from God. I believe we did as well when we received Jesus. And when I say those four areas, I say, then I do have the authority to speak into my family's life. I do have the power to tear down in the spirit strongholds that's been holding them back from receiving Jesus, from getting the message of reconciliation, of coming and running back to God. You have that in in your hands the word of God says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but spiritual for the tearing down of strongholds this morning I'm really excited about this message because there's a there's a spirit shift I believe that God wants to do in our lives that we'll get back to the place of of not being passive but being active in our faith in speaking into the heavenlies um, speaking over our families, speaking over our workplaces, speaking over social fears of influence that we have, and speaking into our communities, leading them back to Jesus Christ. Come on, you have the power inside of you, Jesus Christ, by these Holy Spirit, to speak life into dead areas. Into dead areas, I'm saying it again, into dead areas in my family life, people that do not know Jesus yet. Come on, in my workplaces, where my environment, my social spheres of influence and then like I said in my community I have the authority but it's time for me to stand up and recognize the mantle recognize the calling and step out into it with so much faith like Yehu did like Yehu did but be careful that we do not put an instance of compromise in our lives Let's finish strong in those areas. And I want to say that the power of God's authority will do the following. I really believe this strongly. God's calling gives you the power of grace to accomplish your work. God's calling gives you the power of grace to accomplish, come on, your work. The task that God has given you, has He's also given you the grace, the power to accomplish that work. You are not alone, like He said in 2 Corinthians. Come on. And then the second thing I want to say, then I'm all, and then I'm done. The mantle is recognized, gives boldness in spirit and in the natural. Come on. The mantle, come on, is recognized. I want to say this. In the spirit, firstly, the mantle that God has placed over you, the authority and the anointing, is recognized in the spirit. When you speak in the spirit, the enemy hears that and he obeys that. Come on. So know this today. You have the authority to speak into the heavenlies. That's why you have the authority to pray as a body. Come on. And like I said, and it gives you the boldness in spirit and in the natural. How do we know this? Because when we look at Acts, when Peter went and Peter got baptized with the Holy Spirit. He led 3,000 people to Jesus Christ because he was filled with the Spirit of God and the commission was called into action in his life. And he saw 3,000 people, come on, 3,000 people come to Jesus Christ. How much more today can we do as believers when we start trusting and realizing the authority and power God has placed enough? It is time for us 
to tear down the cult worship that is around us and in our midst. When I say that cult worship is all those things that puts itself up against the knowledge of our great God. All those things we need to start tearing it down in the spirit by praying, by picking up our mantles, take it out from the dirt, put it on, get that authority back into your life. Start recognizing the calling upon your life. In Jesus' name, I'm calling you to action today. I believe God is calling you to action today, just like he did with Yeo. I believe he's calling you and saying, wake up, O sleeper. It is time for you to take action, you know? Take action into what I've called. Don't shrug it off. Don't do like the first thing that Yeo did and say, it's just a babbling honor. It's a madman that brought me a word. No, this morning, pick it up. Stand in that authority. In Jesus' name, I pray that over you. I want to pray for you, and then we're finished with the stream this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I want to pray for those listening. Holy Spirit, there's such an anointing in my room this morning. I want to pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come, Father, and you'll touch those, Father. If you are one of them, to reach out your hands this morning. Say, you know what? I've been asleep. I've been asleep for a while now. I'm praying um, that God would come and touch you right now there in your living room, wherever you are. If you're sitting wherever you are the Holy Spirit may touch you right now I pray for the life to come back to you I pray for the authority of God to hit you this morning like a lightning bolt and refresh you once again in the mighty name of Jesus I pray father that you would come Lord and refresh our thoughts give us the boldness and the strength to stand up and say father for our families for our workplaces for our social spheres of influence and for our communities we come and we pray strongly into it because we have have the authority we are ambassadors of our higher kingdom so in Jesus name we're calling into action yes everyone that is a believer of Christ this morning in Jesus name for the great commission rests upon our shoulders in Jesus name father I pray father we will bless this morning I pray Holy Spirit that um, we're gonna have a great week father in recognizing the mantles upon our lives in Jesus name amen and amen so have a wonderful day everyone and a wonderful women's day as well this morning is women's day so ladies thank you so much mothers thank you so much for being such good ta- uh, um, you know moms to our children uh, especially a great shout out for my own wife Maureen I love you so much uh, you're the best mother and best wife I could not ask or get better in my life there's no way you are special to me and I just want to honor God for you in my life and I know that there's a lot of husbands that feel this way this morning so have a wonderful woman's day and uh, we pray that uh, your your relationship with God would go even deeper and that you would be blessed today uh, be really pampered by your husbands and by your families Uh, so in Jesus name have a wonderful day guys and I know that we love you and uh, God bless bye You know sin that we might become his righteousness be humble So we just want to take this opportunity to give you the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. And we just want to start off by saying thank you so much, Quinonia and family members, for giving so faithfully with your tithes and your offering. As you can see, the um, message or the details are available on screen. So which way you, wherever you want to pay, there is the bank details that can be used. I just want to do a special message as well and say thank you very much for those who give that are not necessarily in Koinonia. Thank you so much for what you are sowing as an offering into this ministry, into Koinonia Church and Koinonia family. We really appreciate it. It really goes a long way in what we're doing locally in Koinonia and in the community. So God bless. Thank you guys for giving so faithfully into the kingdom of God. Koinonia family as well. Thank you for giving in a time when it's really hard to give and that you are faithful in your tithes and your offerings and we really do appreciate it so we'll keep on the we'll leave the message on for a little while longer as we worship so that you can have time to write down the details but have a wonderful day and God bless
Listen to 